Well, what is going on, everybody? Welcome. Welcome to the Wild Card Wednesday. Just getting some last minute stuff set up. We're going to start. We're going to start in like 30 seconds. Start counting. Someone start counting in the chat. Down from 30. Go. Actually, you don't have to do that, but I promise it's going to be quick. was interesting so the first thing i'm gonna do is welcome every whoop that's not right that's not right what am i doing let's do this welcome everybody to wild card freaking wednesday grim green back here today thank you so much for joining me you know this wild card wednesday stream exists because i'm not going to be here thursday i'm not going to be here tomorrow to do a vlog which really bums me out we've talked about this in the past whenever i can't do a vlog it's just a bummer i love the vlogs and when i can't do a vlog it's a huge bummer but i still want to do fucking wild card wednesday i am i I might be bringing this wild card wednesday back on a permanent basis because i like it so much i kind of have a vision like a plan like a format plan for this wild card wednesday stream but we're not there uh we're not quite there yet so welcome welcome everybody how's everybody doing today in the chat i want to give uh the first shout out of the day to a fella in the chat oh that's right the hold music is still on i like the hold music should i leave the hold music on No, we'll turn the hold music off, but I am going to give a shout out to someone in the chat that I just saw, Brenton Devereaux. I think I'm saying your last name right, but I know your first name is Brenton. He said he's never caught a live stream before, and this is his first, first live stream. So welcome. Let's all welcome Brenton to the live stream. Yo, yo, shout out to you guys. I see you there, Rob. I see you there, Jeremy V. Appreciate you being here. And to answer your question, Thomas Crow, I am the hell doing great. I went and got a haircut today. And, you know, I might be balding, but haircut day is still my favorite freaking day of the week. I I just love it. Uh, I go to this girl, uh, Danny, Danny Tiger. She's incredible. She's amazing. If you're in LA and you need a, and you need a dope haircut, hit up Danny Tiger. She's over there on Instagram. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to be starting off this Wednesday with just a little bit of an afternoon beer. That's no big deal. That's what we do. It's a Miller High Life, you know. It's not like I'm drinking some huge bottle of, you know, uh, Imperial Stout. No. We just we just got a Miller High Life today to just chill with a Miller High Life. So cheers. Here's to you guys. Mmm. Yeah, 
Spectacular. Spectacular. So I do have some things that I wanted to talk about today. We're going to be talking about what's going on in the United Kingdom and vape shops opening inside hospitals. Yep. That's what's happening. It's a thing. It's going on. Uh, I got got this news off of Twitter. Want to give a shout out to Logan Exhales for bringing this to my attention. But yeah, they are opening vape shops inside of hospitals in the United Kingdom, and that's bananas. And I love it. And we're gonna talk about it. We're also gonna read a little article. I don't know if it's if it's too long. I haven't really perused it. This is just something I found. But we are gonna talk about this article in. Uh, from San Francisco, San Francisco, uh, as we all know, I think we're all pretty aware of this fact that San Francisco just banned, um, all vapor products, everything (laughs) you can't vape in San Francisco at all. None of it, zero of it in San Francisco. It's, it's bananas. Yes. Thank you for that. In the, in the, in the chat, Addy Tooney, vaporfacts.health.nz unbelievable website. Everybody go check out that website, but we're going to be talking about San Francisco a little bit. We're going to be talking about the UK a little bit. I have a little bit of vape mail here that I am really, really excited about as well, because there is a package. There is a package from Kennedy vapor in here. And when you see a package from Kennedy vapor, you open that package as soon as you possibly can. I'm, I'm really excited to get into that. I'm really excited to get into a few of these packages, honestly. But uh, yeah, I guess first things first, let's, uh, I'm not going to do uh, what I've been vaping. That's not a wild card Wednesday thing. All I have with me today right now is that new Squid Industries double barrel V3 right there and that crazy sort of Escher-like uh, graphics. I just love this. It's topped with the uh, K-Fun Light 2019 on there. That's loaded up with, hang on. Uh, that's loaded up with water Malone DIY or die Wayne appreciate you and this liquid water Malone 12 milligram mouth to lung literally all day long this is all I vaped all day long Mm. Mm. Mike vapes is the Greek god of modern vaping Tex-Mex vapor that's some those are some strong words right there He's a Greek god of modern vaping. Anyway, that's all I'm vaping today. And let's talk about it. Let's talk about these hospitals that are opening up vape shops. Uh, This came to me, like I said, from uh, uh, Logan Exhales over there on Twitter. Shout out to Logan. He came from Azeem, who is one of the lawyers at the law offices of Keller and Heckman, which are heavily involved in the lawsuit that I believe is still going on against the FDA. Um, But Azeem had posted this as well. And it's it's not it's it's a little bit shocking, right? If you don't really know what's going on, you know, I'm sure there are loads of Americans sitting around their little internet computers. I don't know why I said internet computers. That's internet computers that are probably sitting around their little laptop seeing this news of like a vape shop opening inside of a hospital. Inside of a hospital. This comes obviously from the United Kingdom because the United Kingdom is embracing tobacco harm reduction and they plan to have a smoke-free society by 2030. That's their new goal. By the year 2030, the United Kingdom hopes to have their country be 100% smoke-free because of vaping. They're utilizing far less harmful vapor products to do this. So we're going to just read this little article right here. Uh, First hospital vaping shop opens to help smokers kick the habit. And I, again, I don't know how long this is. Oh, I can't even read the whole thing because you have to subscribe. Wow, that is... I'm not going to pay to read this. Maybe we can find it somewhere else on the internet, but I can at least read the first few paragraphs. Two hospitals in the Midlands have become the first in Britain to open vape shops selling e-cigarettes to patients and visitors as part of an effort to eradicate smoking. That first sentence 
is really kind of all you need from this. It just it's a huge reflection of how they're treating vapor products in the United in the United States versus how they're treating treating vapor products in the United Kingdom. Britain is opening vape shops in hospitals to help visitors and patients not smoke cigarettes in efforts to eradicate smoking. That first paragraph just says so much. Not only that they're embracing tobacco harm reduction, but that they believe it will eradicate smoking. I believe that. Let's see. Can we have a show of hands in the chat who believes that vaping will eradicate smoking? I love that term, eradicate. It's going to eradicate smoking 100%. 500% if, uh, if the government would just kind of let it happen instead of constantly, constantly, constantly standing in the way of it. Jose, very gracious of you, brother. Thank you so much. Uh, Barbara, though, th- th- thank you for the heads up. Very gracious of you. The, the music is still on hold. Uh, Monochrome with Domino, very gracious of you. Yeah, Stanton Glance's head just exploded. I can't, I would love, I would pay. There's no amount of money I wouldn't pay to see the expression on Stanton Glantz's face reading this article about them opening up vape shops in hospitals, believing that it can eradicate smoking. His eyes must just be bulging out of his head. (laughs) His eyes just must be bulging out of his head. And he's probably, I'm guessing that a lot of these tobacco control guys are are panicking a little bit because, like I said, they can't run from the science forever. Stanton Glantz claims to be a scientist, but his actions show otherwise, and they can't run from the science forever, and that's all they're trying to do. They're just trying to run from the science. Thank you, Jeremy. You are awesome. Hashtag vape for life. Yeah. Yeah. Let's all, let's all vape. It's not it's not as impressive, you know, to to grab a mouth to lung de- device in like a defiant vaping, uh, you know, exhibition. You're like, yeah, my right to vape. Hang on. Let me. Yeah. Works a lot better when you have like one of those. Uh, Sort of clouds, bro, cloud situation. And that's only the first paragraph. Somewhere between the x-ray department and the blood testing center at Sandwell General Hospital in West Bromwich, the shop sells products with such names as Jubbly Bubbly, Wizard's Leaf, and Simply Tobacco. Its sister outlet, also run by eSig Wizard, operates at a city hospital in Birmingham. And then that's as far that's as far as I can read. But that's really... That's actually a lot of really good information there. E-Sig Wizard is the one opening these shops inside of hospitals. And E-Sig Wizard is one of those companies that have been around for a very, very long time. A very, very long time in the industry. In fact, if you go back, hmm, if you go back way far into my YouTube when I did like, it was one of these like DIY juice mixing videos that I did a long time ago. Is that just tobacco, Joe? I'm, tr- I'm going to try not to go full Alex Jones in the uh, in the wild card Wednesday this time. But if you go way, way back into one of those old DIY mixing videos, the supplies that I had in that video that I was using came from eSig Wizard out of the UK. They used to sell a lot of like DIY supplies, PGVG nicotine pipettes and flavoring for DIY. I like eSig Wizard. I-, I respect eSig Wizard. And I think it's... I think it's unbelievable that the the stark difference between the United States and the United Kingdom, and I feel like we're beating a dead horse into the ground here, but the stark difference, I was just driving down Hollywood Boulevard, you know what I saw? I saw that big billboard on the side of that building that shows a bunch of kids vaping, and then it says things like, brain poison, all over it. Nicotine equals anxiety. It changes your brain. And it's all these like sickly kids like vaping. I see that on the side of the street. And then in the UK, there's vape shops inside of a hospital. And this is just the first one. This is going to be like a damn thing. You can go to hospitals in the UK 
And if you're a smoker and you're a patient, and if you're a smoker and you're a visitor, you can buy a vape in a hospital because they believe it's going to eradicate vaping. And the United States believes that nicotine is brain poison. There's, there's a, there's a huge divide here and we're going to have to like find some sort of middle ground in the United States. There can't be these two extremes going on. There can't be this extreme in the United Kingdom of we love vaping. We're going to get all of our citizens on vapor products. We're going to have a smoke free country by 2030. And then this stark contrast on the other side, this huge divide in the United States of we're telling people it's as bad as cigarettes. We're telling people it's brain poison. We're inflating these numbers from the National Youth Tobacco Survey to kind of serve our purpose and our narrative. And we have garbage science coming out from Stanton Glantz and just junk science coming out and just horrible politicians like Mitch McConnell that just want to stand in the way of the future they, they it seems like they want people smoking like i can't come to any other conclusion i feel like the united states just wants people smoking the fact of the matter is they do so let's turn our attention to san francisco where we can talk about why they want people smoking Monochroman with domino the angel of death also claimed to be a scientist ah Okay, there you go. Vaping with Vic, very gracious of you. News broke as well. 60 to 75-year-olds are taking up vaping even more in the UK, and youth smoking has plummeted while youth vaping is up a little. No epidemic. And that's the thing. Vic, very gracious of you. Uh, Thank you for coming to hang out, bro. Really appreciate that. And yeah, the United Kingdom, and this is something that Danielle Jones can, uh, can attest to as well. The United Kingdom, they did a bigger broader study than the National Youth Tobacco Survey, and the conclusions that they came to are interestingly completely different than what they found in the United States. How is it that the United Kingdom does a bigger, broader study than the National Youth Tobacco Survey and then says, and then there's no, the word epidemic didn't even come up. It's only a United States thing. The only people you're hear, you'll hear using the word epidemic are United States politicians. They are the only people in the world, world, with a W, world, using that term epidemic. It's... I gotta reel it back. I gotta reel it back a little bit here, Mike. Mike Vapes, by falsely advertising an epidemic, it will create an epidemic. Yes, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, Mike Vapes. A hundred percent, I agree with you. And thanks for coming to hang out. I mean, even if it's just for a little bit, I appreciate that, Mike, a lot. But yeah, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's exactly what it is. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. There is no epidemic. And the only people, I feel like, I, I feel like a broken record 100% of the time, but the only people showing youths vaping are the anti-vapers. The Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids and the Truth Initiative do an excellent job of making sure that kids know about vaping. They're doing that. that. They're doing a great job of it, too, apparently. They're the only ones doing it. The, the hypocrisy is it's off the charts. It's unreal. And as a general rule, I don't, I'm not, I, I don't really... I'm not really super bothered by hypocrisy, which as I know is like a kind of a weird thing to say, but generally hypocrisy doesn't super bother me. It does when it's in a real official capacity like this, you know, when they're actually making laws and things based on this hypocrisy, but general hypocrisy doesn't really super bother me. Like it's an annoying trait, but chances are if someone's being a hypocrite, I'm going to agree with them on one of their points. Like if, if someone says you you should never drink alcohol, you should just never drink alcohol. They're like a prohibitionist. They don't want you to have any personal freedom. They said, you know, you should never drink alcohol. And then secretly behind the scenes, they do drink alcohol. Yeah. I, that doesn't really bother me because I agree with, with one of their points they're the ones that, that are wrong and conflicted. Like, that's your own shit to sort out. Someone who's a hypocrite, the issue is with them. I, I, I'll agree with one of your points, 
So go ahead. Go be a hypocrite. I don't care. Michelle Lynn, does this mean no pre-show for That's What She Said This Week? Yes. Yes, Michelle Lynn, very gracious of you. Love that little number right there. Um, yes, no vlog this week. That means no That's What She Said pre-show. You guys are you're on your own. You're the headliners now. You're the headliners. Dave, very gracious of you. Looks like we all need to go to the UK. Uh, look, I'm not even... That might be a little bit joking, but I might not even be a little bit joking. There were times last year where the, uh, the the idea of moving to the United Kingdom was actually discussed, like in this household. I had brought it up about actually moving to the United Kingdom and if Casey could transfer and get a job in the United Kingdom. I can't handle it anymore. I can't handle it. Uh, Jab, what's your name? Jablino 59 very gracious of you think about the economy fueled by that poison that's the issue cigarettes are one of the few things manufactured in the US anymore it's a damn shame yeah it is it's a damn shame you know the United States was built on three things sugar alcohol and tobacco that's that's what we do in the United States there's a there's a reason why we have cigarette so many cigarette companies in the United States there's a reason why we have so much tobacco in the United States there's a reason why throughout what the 50s 60s 70s and 80s that like all military personnel with their rations got cigarettes it was just in their pack in their kit like welcome you're not a smoker you will be after you're done serving your country we're just they were just manufacturing smokers manufacturing smokers and this is you know we talk a lot about uh, my dad and my dad coming down to live with me which is I'm, I'm still just very very excited about that but I had a conversation with my dad recently we were talking about my grandfather his dad served in World War II got addicted to cigarettes and smoking by enlisting he was not previously a smoker the United States Army got him smoking and then he ended up dying of lung cancer is this the cycle that we just we want to keep going we, we want to get smokers smoking so that they die eventually like something has to break this cycle and something can break this cycle if the federal government would let it break the cycle good lord I get riled up God, I get too riled up, man. Anyway, let's uh let's turn our attention now to San Francisco. Yeah, no hat today. You know, it's one of those uh I got a haircut today. Uh I said this earlier, I got a haircut today. Uh, I am I'm very much balding on top, but I still go in for haircuts. It's my favorite day of the, of the month. I love haircut day. Love haircut day. So, yeah, I'm going without a hat. I might not even rock a hat to NVE. Shit. I don't know. Just full of surprises, man. No hat, no nothing. So, so everybody keeping up? Everybody keeping up. Bub riled up, Nick. All right. Now, let's talk about San Francisco. I just want to make sure we're doing okay on time here. I want to talk about San Francisco just a little bit because there's a great article that came out. Uh, Lindsey Stroud, who I, be I think I follow Lindsey Stroud on Twitter. She's a Twitterer. She's a Twitterer. She is a Twitterer. Um, she wrote this. Great opinion piece, uh, townhall.com. In fact, I'm going to leave this in the chat. I'm just going to put this uh, this link in the chat right now. If anybody wants to go click on it or whatever, it's fantastic, and I'm just going to read it. And the big headline on this says, Keep smoking, San Francisco. The Golden, S the Golden Gate City needs MSA funds. And the MSA is something that... We know a lot about a lot of vapors and people in, you know, whatever advocacy, whatever this is. We know about the MSA. We know how it works. We know that states get money, that cities get money based on tobacco sales. And the more tobacco sales that they have, the more money that they get from the master settlement agreement. It's one of those things that exists that nobody seems to recognize or, or call out in any capacity. I've never heard uh, health committee people or politicians calling out states on the MSA. Like you just want people smoking so that you can get more money. That's what, that's what we should be saying to every politician that takes every state that took place in the MSA. You just want 
people smoking so that you can get more money. After banning the sale of flavored vapor products, including menthol cigarettes and flavoring and e-cigarettes, San Francisco is snuffing out tobacco harm reduction again. Frisco is now the first city to ban the sale of electronic cigarettes. Mayor London Breed is expected to sign the ban, which will essentially save tobacco companies by wiping out a major competitor, electronic cigarettes and vaping devices. This is especially ironic because 23 years ago, San Francisco became the first locality to sue major tobacco manufacturers. After nine states filed lawsuits to recoup the state health care funds for smoking-related illnesses, the class action lawsuit resulted in the largest settlement in U.S. history. Here it is, the Master Settlement Agreement. Under the MSA, participating tobacco companies are bound to pay the suing states in perpetuity. That means forever a portion of the revenue collected from tobacco sales. MSA summed up into one nice little sentence right there. Under the MSA, participating tobacco companies are bound to pay the suing states in perpetuity a portion of the revenue collected from tobacco sales. Any state or any city that operates under the MSA is directly profiting from tobacco sales. That's all you need to know to see who is banning vaping, who is demonizing vaping, who is vilifying vaping. It's because vaping It's cutting into your sweet MSA money. It's right here, black and white, clear as crystal. Pay the states in perpetuity a portion of revenue collected from tobacco sales. And though many public health advocates believed this to be a major win, the real losers of the MSA were smokers who are essentially paying the annual payments to the states through user fees. And I don't know, we don't have time right now to get into user fees and all the new user fees that Trump wants to do. We're going to collect a, he said something, some ridiculous number like a hundred million dollars or something from user fees, vaping with Mobro. I am doing, uh, I am doing excellent. I'm actually looking forward to not being angry and getting into some of this vape mail, but I can't not be angry because we're talking about the MSA in San Francisco right now. You don't even need to look any further. You just need to follow the money. San Francisco is ranking in MSA funding. From 2017 to 2018, MSA payments to the Bay City increased by 19% from $9.173 million to $10.952 million. $9 million directly from Big Tobacco to the city of San Francisco based on tobacco sales. This is, I mean, this is just transparent as shit. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. In 2002, San Francisco was one of the three California cities, including Los Angeles and San Diego, to receive approximately half of the estimated $21 billion in MSA funds earmarked for the Golden State over a 25-year period, according to the California Legislative Analysis Office. Unfortunately, for big tobacco and localities across the land, e-cigarettes have totally disrupted the status quo. Since their introduction into the U.S. market in 2007, an estimated 3 million American adults have used these products to quit smoking. Indeed, e-cigarettes have been twice as effective as any NRT in helping smokers quit. True facts, more true facts right there. New England Journal of Medicine, we can all go read it. Vapor products are more than twice as effective as any NRT, patch, gum, chantix, whatever on the market. Twice as effective, twice as effective. Moreover, despite fear-mongering campaigns against e-cigarettes, these products are significantly less harmful than combustible cigarettes. Numerous public health groups, including Public Health England, the Royal College of Physicians, the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, note that e-cigarettes are less dangerous than combustible tobacco cigarettes. In June 2019, the American Cancer Society stated existing existing research has found that e-cigarette use is likely to be significantly less harmful for adults than regular smoking than smoking regular cigarettes. That's from the American Cancer Society. The American Cancer Society says that they're less harmful, but then the American Cancer Society also comes to hearings like the one that I went to in LA where they speak 
about banning flavored vapor products and banning vapor products in general. I guess that's the kind of hypocrisy that bothers me. Is it alarming in San Francisco, which prided itself in 1996 on being the first locality to fight big tobacco, would shutter an industry that is helping remedy the effects of combustible tobacco cigarettes? In 1996, the San Francisco city attorney Louise Rene told the Los Angeles Times that counties in particular cannot afford their scare public funds drained by having to pay for the treatment of tobacco-related illnesses. Even more alarming, San Francisco officials are restricting adult access to tobacco harm reduction products in an effort to save the precious MSA dollars that are borne by the lungs of smokers who would benefit most from e-cigarettes being widely available. We're almost done. Should I just finish reading this? We have like one more paragraph. And I'm, I, I threw a link down to this in the description. Then I promise we're going to get to some vape mail. But I am, I'm still angry at San Francisco. And I want to I st- I wanna ride this feeling a little bit. I want to be really mad at San Francisco. I kind of want, want all of us to be really mad at San Francisco. Really very mad at San Francisco. And you know what bums me out the most? Hang on. You know what bums me out? Well, let's get that label facing out right there. You know what bums me out the most is I fucking love San Francisco. It's an incredible city filled with incredible people and art and culture and sciences. It's unbelievable. I love San Francisco and I love going to San Francisco. But you know where I haven't been in a really long time because of their policies on vapor products? Yeah. Fucking San Francisco. I can't go to San Francisco, and that pisses me off. And it pisses me off that it's their fault that I can't go to San Francisco. Let's finish this up. Unfortunately, 2019 has been riddled with an onslaught of misguided legislation and fake news fear-mongering campaigns targeting e-cigarettes. For the record, levels of formaldehyde cited in one widely acclaimed 2016 bogus study have been totally debunked. Even the lower levels of formaldehyde found in the more recent, less biased studies were still significantly lower than the levels of formaldehyde found in combustible cigarettes. In essence, San Francisco would rather smokers be subject to more dangerous chemicals so that MSA funding fund can keep on flowing. It's all about the money. Don't let anybody tell you any different. It's not about public health. It's not about anything. It's about money first, public health second. If there's a shiny example of this, it is San Francisco. Clearly, they care about money more than public health. Clearly. In May, Mayor London unveiled a budget that includes more than $1 billion in additional spending for the next physical, fiscal year. It is overwhelmingly apparent Public officials in San Francisco do not care about public health. They care about tobacco dollars. It is overwhelmingly apparent public health officials in San Francisco do not care about public health. They only care about tobacco dollars. And this isn't even like weird tinfoil hat shit. This is the MSA is real. Tobacco tax dollars are real. San Francisco and California benefit monetarily, financially from that MSA, which is based on tobacco sales in the state. Like this is all very straightforward, cut and dry. And everyone's just, we kind of just go, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. States should profit off of death. San Francisco seems to think so. California seems to think so. And that's another thing that pisses me off is I love California and I'll never move. And I love living here. And I tell everybody the same thing. I say, California is an amazing state that's run by fucking idiots. And that's where I end up on San Francisco. That's where I end up on California. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, looks like we all need to go to the UK. Uh, orange OG orange beard move to the UK. I can show you great pubs. I know you could, I know you could. And I know that the UK probably has banging pubs, just baller banging pubs. I mean, I've been to a few of them. I went to, uh, the one, the one cool pub bar that I went to in the United Kingdom with who was there? Ruby Roo was there. Was Jess there? Matthias for sure. 
and other guy from Beyond Vape that I can't remember his name. We went to the Crowbar. We went to the Crowbar in the UK, which is this little hole in the wall metal bar. And it was just packed. We were just asses to elbows. And it was just metal cranked as loud as you possibly can. And you get a beer and you go in the back and you just stand in a huge crowd of people and listen to metal and drink beer. And that's basically what we did. That's basically what we did. Richard V, very gracious of you. I don't mean to offend, but the U.S. is basically glorifying corruption and how this goes unpunished is beyond me. I I don't know who you're going to offend. You're just speaking the truth right now. The U.S. is glorifying corruption and how this goes unpunished is beyond me as well. It's beyond me that San Francisco politicians can get away with that. I, it... it, it It makes you wonder if the general public would be as open to this type of thing if politicians were actually being genuinely like honest with their intentions and their agenda. If they came to the public and said, look, we spent way more money than we have. We need this MSA money from tobacco. And the only way we can get more MSA money is if you fuckers start buying more cigarettes. So how about you help us out a little bit? Do you think that how do you think that would go over with the public? Probably not great. Probably not great. Probably not great. Low and slowish welcome. Yo, yo, to ya. So let's, uh, let's shift gears completely here. Let's just whew, shake it off. Shake off all that, all that nonsense. All that San Francisco, all that MSA. Just, you know, give, give your neck a little, oh, yeah. Just shake it off. Just shake that shit off. Now, now, now we're going to get into some uh, some mail that I have. Vanilla scented garbage bags. I got a bunch of mail. I have a knife and all of my knives, all of my household knives just uh, end up disappearing. They, they're, they're just, there's a, I have like five and they're all gone. They're, they're somewhere around the house. This is the only one I can find. I believe I got this one. I'm going to show you this knife because it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty legitimately badass if it'll focus on it. Yeah, that's a dope knife. That's a dope knife. I like the skull. Ugh. Boosh. It's just a bitchin' knife. And I'm going to use this knife to open up all of this mail. And the first... Uh... See, this is the one... This is in the title. I put this confusing because it's from you well, And I don't know um, what else you well could possibly be sending me. I already have a... Why did I do that? Why did I just throw garbage on the ground? I have a garbage bag right here. I'm just... I feel like I'm just making things more difficult for myself when they don't need to be that difficult. Ugh. Honestly, what I'm hoping is in this UL box is just a whole mess of caliber and stuff. That's all I want. Oh, no. Okay, it's not. You know, I always, I always want a whole mess of caliber and stuff from you well, but it's never, uh, it's never what shows up. You guys know what this is? Oh, you guys know what this is. Do I even need to say it? Is this something we need to try and set up in this video? This is the you well amulet, you guys, and it looks like an Apple watch, (sighs) except you can vape out of it. I'm very, uh, I don't know. Look, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. If it vapes well, then fine. It's still silly. Like, don't get me wrong. It's a novelty and it's silly, but here's the thing. It might not be to someone. There might be a smoker out there that is thinking, man, I hate carrying around my vape. If I could just have a vape that I clip to my wrist, then I would vape more often or I would vape when I would normally be smoking. So you know what? As silly and goofy as it is, there is a chance, albeit a small one, that this could be the one thing that that certain smoker is looking for. And uh, that's I think that has uh, validity. I think that has validity to it. So we got that. We got something else here. I think this is that, uh, I think this is that uh, auto squonker from uh, IPV. I've, I haven't got to try it. I've, only, I've seen a few people using it. I've seen videos for it. I, I, Chris says, please open it. 
And then, and then Tommy says, screw that watch. You never know. Yep. Yep. Yeesh. Yeesh. Yep. IPV V3 Mini is an intelligent all-in-one automatic bottom feeding device with an accurate temperature control system. This device is a game changer that brings a revolutionary innovation to the e-cig industry. From now on, we will have an ESS driver system besides our RTA system, RDA system, and pod systems. It adopts Yihi ESS driver technology, which supports the auto bottom feeding system on the basis of accurate Yihi chipset control powered by Yihi, or some people say Yihi, some people say Yihi, or Yi, I don't know, I say Yihi. SX635J chipset, the IPV V3 Mini, can support multiple intelligent control systems. It is designed... Multiple intelligent control systems. We wonder why smokers are confused by vapor products. <laughs> we, I wonder why sometimes when I talk to people who are smoking and I ask them if they've ever tried vaping, they say yes, but it was too confusing. Yeah, but I don't, you know, I had to keep up with the charging batteries and liquids and I spilled liquids all over the place. And we're like, yeah, that's tough. Like that's a hard part of vaping. And then we introduce like, oh, oh automatic temperature control modules. Smokers are going to go, what? what, what, what does that mean? Multiple intelligent control systems, multiple intelligent control systems. Regardless of the multiple intelligent control systems, this is dope, and I, uh, I'm really excited about this, and I kind of really, really want to set this one up. I know it's coil head based. I know there's a chamber for liquid. Yeah. Yeah. Little chamber for liquid, and it's an automatic squonker. I'm going to have to watch a video or something. I try not to watch too many reviews of products because I don't like to sway my own opinion of something, but... I have a feeling I'm going to watch a review for this. Who did a review for this? Matt, I think, did. Daniel, DJ Ellsby Vapes did. Throw it on the floor. <laughs> Throw it on the floor. I don't know if British Eyes is here, but I do have a box from British Eyes. Ugh, okay. Cut towards your buddy, not towards your body. I almost just uh, stabbed this into my side. That would have been... Interesting, entertaining, a little bit maybe, frightening, yeah, definitely, exciting though, like I would leave the stream going while I called 911 and got rushed to the hospital, I would take the stream with me, hey buddy, <laughs> for British eyes only, you, you comedian, here is his as promised, oh, okay, here's the thing, I'm gonna, um, I'm going to keep this a little bit secret because he sent me a retro vape. He sent me a retro vape that I would like to use in a future retro vape. And I only have this on loan temporarily from the Four British Eyes Only uh, collection. Let me read this. You can fit up uh, 30 mil. Oh, there you go. yeah. All right. Nope. Thank you for British eyes only. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to keep this one just a little bit of a secret here. Just a little bit of a secret because uh, I want to use it in a retro vaping. Um, and I kind of want it to be like a fun surprise. I kind of want it to, uh, pardon me, burp life, be a fun, little, uh, you know, a little bit of a funner, fun surprise. A little bit of a fun surprise. But thank you, British eyes. This is going to be a dope retro vape. And this, oh, unicorn, unicorn, bring it to NVE. What should I bring to NVE? The retro vape? Do I bring the retro vape, British eyes? Do I bring it? No, I already have my, I already have my plans for, for NVE. I already know what I'm bringing. I'm bringing very much little. Oh, look, sexy full videos, man. I mean, thank you, Addy Tooney, for deleting that, but I kind of want to see some uh, full sexy free videos. Why not? Why would you not do that? Bob Ellis, rumor has it that you started the fight in Toontown at Disneyland. <laughs> 
first of all, very gracious of you, Mr. Robert uh, Ellis. And no, I didn't. I saw that video. That video, that video was really weird. There's a video in of uh, some people fighting, like fighting, throwing haymakers around, fighting in Toontown, like in front of their fucking kids, man. Like their kids are in strollers, screaming and crying, and the parents are physically fighting each other. It's like I'm like what are we doing as a society? Like, stop it. You're in Disneyland in front of children and you're just going to be a shit bag and start fighting. Like it's insane. But so then I saw this fight video and I noticed that Disneyland security didn't like, they let this fight go on for like eight minutes before anybody interfered before Disneyland security was even there. And I always hear these, stories about Disneyland security. And one of the rumors or one of the, like, you know, the old wives tales of Disneyland is that they hire uh, regular people like security guards. They dress them up in, uh, you know, civilian clothing, like they're tourists and the security guards will just walk around the park, stand in lines, walk around the park. And if need be at any moment, they could just spring into action and tackle someone down or remove somebody from the property and I thought, wow, that's really smart. Really smart, Disneyland. Really smart. And then I see this fight happening and I go, well, maybe they're just not in Toontown. <laughs> maybe they're just not in Toontown. You should watch it. You'll just hate everybody involved. You'll just hate them. That was on uh, Public Freakout. One of my favorite subreddits is, is, is Public Freakout. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, unicorn Vapes. Oh, sorry, one more super chat from Clouds and Coils. Very gracious of you. Very thank you. Will you be bro tripping with Yak and Kent to New York? So, maybe, maybe. Uh, I am going to bring my camera. I'm going to bring my DSLR camera. I'm going to bring my monopod. And I'm just going to shoot a uh, you know, whole bunch of video as much as I can. Throw something cool together. We are going to kind of be bro tripping. Dwayne and I are flying out tomorrow to Jersey. And then we're driving up with... Uh, me and Eric and Turk, I believe, up to uh, up to Long Island. So there, is, hold, don't hold your breath. But there's like a 50-50 shot. There's going to be a full-on bro trip. So this came from Unicorn Mods just now. And this is a mech. This is a mech, and I wasn't a huge fan of like the Unicorn uh, RDA or RDAs that I had uh, received in the past. But this mech mod, very slick, solid brass, hybrid 510. It's uh, it's sort of, um, you know, contoured a little bit, contoured a little bit. Let me see if I can uh, get you a shot of this unicorn vapes mech mod. But you can kind of see it's contoured a little bit in the middle. It says unicorn vapes kind of all over it right there with some unicorns kind of at the top. I don't know what finish this is, if it's like a... It's textured, kind of. It feels textury, and it feels uh, like seracoded. It feels textury, but it also feels really, really smooth. Like, it feels very unique. This is a very, very unique texturing on here. They included some of these, uh, are these like beauty rings? Yep, they definitely are. That's where we're at in vaping right now. You get big gold beauty rings. Look at that. It looks like the, the one true ring. You have to take it to Mordor. You can put this on here over the top. And now you have, instead of a black stripe at the top, you got a slick, uh, slick little golden stripe there at the top. Look at that. Get all customizy on there. All right, cool. All right, cool. Mech mod from Unicorn Vapes Inc. Constant contact. Constant contact, they say. Constant. That. Constant contact. Interesting. Well, looking forward to spending a little bit of time with this uh, Unicorn Vapes mech mod. Oh, button's got a little zip to it. Got a little bit of a zippy feeling. I'm not sure if anybody's hip to the term zippy, but it sometimes happens in mech mod switches where the machining lines on the inside and then on the inside of the switch, they're just kind of rubbing on each other like a record player. And it... Can you hear that? Zip. Call that zippy. 
That is a zippy, zippy switch. Zippy, zippy switch. All right, Unicorn Vapes. Well, I've got, uh, I've got three more, and I'm saving Kennedy for the end. Got three more, and I'm saving Kennedy for the end. This is from Independent Vapor Co., Michigan. Smells like liquid. Smells like liquid to me. Wow, a lot of literature. A lot of literature. All right. Ta. Oh. Oh, okay. This is uh these are CBD products. These are CBD products. Certificate of analysis. Interesting. Wow, and it lists out, it like lists out. Okay, where is this from? Independent vapor? Yeah, CBD, 100 milligram full spectrum CBD chews, CBD salve. Yeah, it's all like CBD and CBD flower. And this is hemp rolls. 3741 labs. Why can't I find confidentcannabis.com? Confidentcannabis.com. Anyway, this is all CBD, CBD stuff, CBD cannabis. And they list out on this literature that they gave me. I hope YouTube doesn't uh doesn't want me to be in trouble. They list out um all of the terpenes in it, all of the terpenes and the mass of the terpenes inside the buds. That's kind of un that's kind of unbelievable. Kind of unbelievable. Shit. All right. Well, right on. I got some CBD. I got some CBD stuff. Here, let's read this. Yo, yo, Mr. Grimm. Sorry uh, to hear about all that has been going on with your dad. I know it has to be tough. Yeah. It is. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. I was talking with Pickle the other day, asking her if he's using any CBD products. Yes. After she informed me that he was, I wanted to send him a care package of CBD that we manufacture. Hopefully this will help him ease some of his pains. If there's anything else I can do in the future, please feel free to reach out to me, bro. I'm here for whatever you guys need. Damn it. Oh, Dan. I didn't know who this was from. This is from Dan. Dan Mansfield, oh my Lanta, one of just one of the most stand-up solid dudes I've ever, I've ever, I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. He sent us a bunch of CBD for Dad. This is fantastic. Um, I've included two bottles of a thousand milligram broad spectrum tinctures, Tahoe Kush CBD flower sample pack of helping friendly travel size salve, fossil fuel hundred milligram gummies. We test all of our helping friendly products. If you want to check the results, awesome. Uh, all right, I'm going to wrap this letter up. I hope it helps pop a green out. Anything I can do in the future, don't hesitate to ask. Vape fam looks out for vape fam. Dan Mansfield. I want to be Dan Mansfield when I grow up. What a great guy. Dan, thank you. Love you, bro. Thank you. Very, very, very much appreciated. Um, he has. Dad's been using, uh, Dad's been on the CBD. He's been on the CBD and the uh, the other one, the one that starts with a T. He's been doing both of them. And it's, uh, it's making... I mean, it's making a world of difference, world of difference. I am a firm, firm, firm believer in the power of cannabis for people and pain and healing. It's real. It's real. I've seen it. It's real. I've seen it, Joe. For British eyes only, look deeper in that package. There's a surprise in the box. Not just a retrovate, but you should bring it to NVE. Also, just saying, also... Wrench. Oh, British Eyes wants to be a moderator. Oh, really? Want to be a moderator, you say? Well, that's not up to me. It is a little bit up to me. All right, I'm going to, want me to dig through this box, British? British Eyes? I need to find something at the bottom. I don't want to dig too far into it. Uh, hey, here's something I'm working on. <laughs> Giant frame staple. Two six gauge frames. Eight three millimeter ribbon. Twenty. Just a proof of concept. What? Why'd you tape this up so much, British eyes? I want to show everybody this giant coil. <laughs> Okay, and he says, like, this is just a proof of concept. 
Holy shit. British eyes. What the what? Oh my god. Can can you guys see this this frame staple right here? <laughs> can I do the J Hayes with it? Can I do the J Hayes with the British eyes only? Quick, someone screen capture that. British eyes, you are going off the rails. And he even included like you can see all the all the ribbon wire on the inside. Holy crap, dude. That's hilarious. I love this. I love this so much. This is going to be another desk thing. Giant coils. The world needs more giant coils. The world needs more giant coils. All right, and then that is alone time. Just me and the retro vape. You know? Alone time. <laughs> Just me and the retro vape. All right, well, we're getting closer and closer, you guys. What time is it? It's almost 3 o'clock. Good. I do have places to be. I do have things to do. Actually, I don't. I don't have a lot to do. I have to uh, pack. Oh, bomb squad! Bomb squad! Bomb squad! Bomb squad! Bomb squad! Bomb squad! Holy crap, I'm stoked. Love me some bomb squad. Oh, hats. Amazing. I love this hat. Oh, if I didn't just get a haircut, I would pop this hat on. Okay, I might anyway. It's the rules of the vlog that I have to put the hat on. Skadoosh. What about that? Bomb squad. Bomb squad. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, love bomb squad. Educate, advocate, eliminate. It's, it's a clothing brand apparel. They're fantastic. I love bomb squad. I've seen the... You know, we see uh, Eric, Vinyl, Vinyl and Vapor rocking the bomb squad all the time. Educate, educate, advocate, eliminate. That's words to live by right there. Educate, educate, advocate, eliminate. Bomb squad. Awesome. Stoked. Love it. Loving the bomb squad gear. In fact, eh, I wasn't going to take a hat to NVE. Maybe I should take this bomb squad hat, huh? What do you think? Should I take it off? I mean, I just got a haircut. That's right, Thomas Crow. It is Wild Card Wednesday. There's no rules. It's all right. We'll put the Bomb Squad hat here. We'll just give them... Here's a little bit of, uh, you know, screen time. There you go. Sponsors. Sponsored by Bomb Squad. Not. It's not actually sponsored by Bomb Squad. But now it is. As of right now, it's sponsored by Bomb Squad. All right, we're to the last package. We're to the Kennedy stuff. We're to the Kennedy stuff. Hang on. I feel like we need an intermission. Can we stand up and like stretch? Oh, can I stretch my legs a little bit? Ah, all right. Intermission over. Pelvic thrusting intermission over. When you guys go to vape shows, do you ever forget to vape? Because that happens constantly to me. Constantly. There you go, Bomb Squad. Constantly to me. I'll, I'll spend all day at a vape show. Just talking and shaking hands and high fives and hugs and pictures. And it's fun. And I'm having a great time. And then I'm like, why am I so suddenly irritated? Oh, yeah. I haven't vaped in like five hours. And I just forget. All these vapors around, just fucking forget to vape. And I think that's what I do during live streams too. I I just feel the desire to vape right now. So let's have a let's have an intermission. Let's not have an intermission. Let's have an intermission. You're vaping but don't realize it. Have I been vaping this whole stream? Are you sure? Worst intermission ever. You know what, Jeremy? I used to like you. I mean, I still do, but now I'm mad. I'm just kidding. I'm not mad at you, Jeremy. Here, let's put the... Uh... Better? Just chill for a second. Just chill for a second. All right. Intermission over. Let's get back to the Kennedy stuff. 
overjoyed for Kennedy stuff. See, this is something that might actually make me rethink what I'm bringing to NVE with me. It might. And I'll tell you right now, styrofoam packing peanuts aren't the way to my heart. <laughs> I will never love styrofoam packing peanuts. And Kennedy, Steve, Kennedy, you always do it. If you ever order anything from Kennedy Vapor, you're going to get styrofoam packing peanuts. It's just the way that it is. Nope. We've got Kennedy stuff here at the end, and I am pumped. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, Steve. What'd you do? <sighs> okay. There's two items in here. I'm assuming they're the same. But that just makes me really excited because that means that one of these gets to go into a $2 box at some point. So I hope maybe soon. Maybe today. You never know. What's in here? Can't open this bag. You can't open this bag fast enough. What's going on here? Oh, sex. Oh, fantastic. This is the new Ruby. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, new Ruby. New Ruby Mac. The Ruby Mac is his hybrid, like his actual, actual hybrid. Not a hybrid in that uh, positive 510 pin? No. There's no way. This is the Ruby. Yeah, it says Ruby on it. <laughs> it says Ruby on it. Two post Ruby. All right. So this is a true hybrid in that it is the, the, the build deck, your build deck. Oh, I got my hugs ready, Michelle Lynn. You don't even trip. There will be no shortage of hugs at NVE. Anybody that wants a hug, you get it. No, Ranger Rusty, you know what? I thought so too. But these aren't the kind that you can eat. They have, they have the biodegradable ones that dissolve in water that are made of like wheat or something, and you can actually eat them. Yeah, potato starch, you can eat them. These are actual like O2 emitting. This is styrofoam. Actual, actual styrofoam. Why did I put it in my mouth? Let's look at this ruby. So... This is the Ruby, and honestly, when you first glance at it, it looks a lot like uh, like a Vindicator, right? It's just a, it looks like a Vindicator with a Kennedy twenty four on there or something. It's just very slick. And get a look at this button. He did some, uh, you know, he he put that Kennedy sort of dragon eagle thing. I can't can't really get a good shot of it engraved there onto the button. And the idea is, I can get this off with one hand. Wow, that's talent. That's talent. The deck, the build deck is part of the tube. The build deck is actually machined into the top of the tube. So there's no, you basically eliminate your 510 connection. Any battery you put in here, it, it's, it's just going to work. It's just going to work because there's no 510 connection. There's nothing to unscrew. You don't have to worry about any sort of, is my 510 pin long enough or anything like that? Like, well, this is a hybrid, so be safe. You know, your 510 pin touches your battery. Yes, your 510 pin touches your battery in this too, but there's no way to fuck it up. There's nothing that you can't, you can't. You simply can't because it's hybrid. It's hybrid in the original sense of the term hybrid. Have I repeated myself enough times right now by saying hybrid 8,000 times? Oh, it could be a Griffin. Is it a Griffin Mowgli Vapes? Is it a Griffin? I, th I, have a, I get the feeling that it's a, it's a Phoenix. I'm going to say Phoenix because Phoenix kind of goes along with that whole, you know, Rebirth and, uh, you know, rising from the ashes, rising from the ashes of the ashtray. It works on a lot of levels. And as far as I know, it's still, oh, this is a, what is happening here? Is this constant contact? Hang on. H hang on here, fam. 
trying to pull this switch apart. It looks like constant contact to me. Because there is an extra, this is a traditional Kennedy switch with the two tabs and you can lift it out. But this has an additional sort of uh, spring-loaded plunger on the top. Yeah, it is. It's constant contact. All right, interesting. So I, I want to build this. Do we have time? We don't have, oh, we have time. We have so much time. We've got like 20 minutes. We've got like 20 minutes before this needs to be over. If you guys want to keep hanging out, I am going to build, I'm going to build this Ruby. I'm going to build it. Maybe not like build it. I'm not getting out my drill and I'm not, you know, producing freighter. Uh, chances are uh, I'm going to just end up throwing Turk aliens in here. There's a very high probability of that. And then I need a 21700 battery and then I need some liquid. So hang on. Kennedy says it's a dragon. Kennedy, did he really say it's a dragon, Nick D? He said it's a dragon. Let's see the second one. All right. That's right. I got so excited. I forgot that there was a second one here. I'm Obviously, the stainless one is like my preferred. Since this is in blue, I'm going to guess that it's brass. And I don't know why I'm making that, uh, that assumption, but oh, fuck off. Fuck off. That is beautiful. The video, video is not going to do this justice. Nothing's going to do this bastard justice. That is exceptionally, that is an exceptionally pretty mech mod. That is exceptionally beautiful. It doesn't, you can't even appreciate it. You have to see this thing in real life. That is beautiful. Holy crap, that is beautiful. And I feel like this may not uh, tarnish. Is this, this is like white gold. Look, we don't want any triple X porn full videos here. This is, this is a damn vape show. Not some porno video show. Get out. <laughs> um, this is beautiful. It's brass. It smells like brass, but it's beautiful. Holy crap. And the black low pro, like low, 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 super low pro drip tip on there. Look at that. Fuck. Well, good job, Richard. Thanks for making me open that second one. This one, I believe, the prettier one, $2 sales. It's going directly to a $2 sale. In fact, I'm going to throw in, uh, I'm going to throw the tools in here as well so that it's all ready to go all ready to go maybe not maybe i can't fit these tools in here maybe the tools didn't come in here for a very specific reason that the tools actually can't really even fit in here oh yeah they can boosh all right all right kennedy let me get uh like i said real quickly let me get some coils let me get some liquid let me get some cotton i'm gonna try to build this thing right now and vape it i want to uh, and you can't stop me liquid i got a liquid to vape i'm just gonna i just turkish maize because it's the first thing i saw even though it's not really maize season right now we're getting into summer maybe i shouldn't vape turkish maize <sighs> why do i do this to myself it doesn't matter nick it doesn't matter 
You can vape Turkish maize. It's fine. It's fine. You can do it, buddy. Good lord. Uh, yeah. Hex key. Hex screws, grub screws, whatever you want to call them. Um, I grab some M-Turk aliens, of course. I, I, it's just M-Turk aliens. Like, if, if I'm running a mech, chances are really, really good that there's going to be M-Turk aliens in it. I just love the way they vape on a mech. Mike Turk himself is a mech guy. He's a mech user, and uh, he kind of builds his coils to be used on mechs. Like, if, if there's a place that M-Turk coils are really going to shine, it's on a mech. I hate to say it, I told you so. Grim Green, for the love it is Holly, please stop. No, no more hold music. That's right. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, Michelle Ann. <laughs> Turn the music down. Can we have it in the background? Okay. The hold music is gone. I'm just trying to, uh, you know. I'm just trying to. Just trying to build, okay? I can't be I can't be bothered to pay attention to every little thing that's going on in my stream. Like, oh, the whole music's still on. Oh, your camera's not working. Here, should we switch it to this for the building segment? How's that? How's crap cam garbage cam looking these days? Not great, but it's still there. And no. I'm not letting these just go flying all over the place anymore. I try to actually keep track of them. Well, you know, lead lead clippings. Just let those fly over. Oh, see, Matt Sinister says the, 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 the hold music was way better. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to Crap Cam. Crap Cam McGarbage Cam. That's what we call this. This is confusing. No, never mind. I forget that these are actually like really, really easy to build on. These Kennedy 2 posts, at least with the Turk aliens that I have right now, you can just, you just wiggle them in. You just wiggle them in and they and you push them right above the airflow. Kennedy, I mean, there's a reason people rip off the Kennedy airflow. He created this airflow that is just flawless. It's just unbelievable it's not adjustable but it's huge and smooth and swooshy and it goes in at the sides and up at your coils that is kennedy airflow he is the originator of kennedy airflow and when you position your coils right over those tubes right over those airflow tubes god it just it all comes together and it just uh it's a thing of goddamn beauty is what it is so let's uh tighten these back down how do i get into contact with you oh, hang on how to get into contact with companies about products for review fairly new reviewer on reddit and ecr we love you there by the way oh cool you guys love me on ecr you guys didn't used to love me on ecr and that's fine that's okay um, I love ecr i love going there i love going there and the vaping subreddit i go to both of those daily um if you're a new reviewer, dude, and you're trying to just get your foot in the door, um, just buy shit for now. Just buy some stuff, review some stuff, buy some stuff, review some stuff. Um, this is, and I don't, uh, this is something I don't say to be, uh, you know, uh, braggy or like, oh, I'm so, you know, whatever. I've never asked for stuff to review. That's just, that's not my style. That's not my jam. I don't ask vendors to review stuff i never never have i ever asked a vendor not one vendor in the last 10 years have i asked like solicited to get stuff to review even when i first started out i was just buying stuff and reviewing it and buying stuff and reviewing it and, you know when you're first starting out you know you, you review a lot of liquids right because liquids are cheap you can get a you know you can spend 20 bucks and get some liquids and then review liquids. So I was reviewing some liquids back in the day. And when I could afford hardware, I'd buy hardware and review it. And then it took about a year, not quite a year. It was like nine months or so. And then eventually, oh God, we're still on crap cam. <laughs> 
And then eventually um, the companies reached out to me and they said, hey, we saw your YouTube. Do you want to review this? And I'm like, oh, fuck. All right. Yeah, sure. Like it felt so official. I was like, I don't, I, this is just my hobby, man. Like, okay, sure, I will. And then I did it. And, and then more companies did it. And then and then I, I, I would review it. And then more companies would reach out. And then you make connections. And then another company will reach out and you make connections. And then th they talk to each other and they go, and then someone will contact me and say, hey, I, I, just, I apologize if this is, you know, but I got your email from so-and-so vendor and they said you did a review and I'd like to send, you know, it's kind of one of those things that if you're, if you're, if you're doing reviews and if you have good content, if you have a good, you know, YouTube, people will watch and vendors will approach you so that you don't have to be that guy that goes to vendors and is like, Hey, especially in 2019, you have no idea in 2019, the level of influencer bullshit is off the charts. There is a food truck. I was just reading this amazing article uh, in the Los Angeles Times about this food truck owner in Los Angeles that had to hang a sign on his food truck that say influencers paid double because he was sick of influencers coming up to his food truck and saying, hey, can I get some free food and I'll put you on my Instagram and it can be for exposure and I'll, I'll give you some exposure on the internet? No, that's not how capitalism works. It's kind of how capitalism works, but that's not how capitalism works. Influencers are ruining the world. I I never want to call myself an influencer. Never, never. Oh, influencers. Enough. Enough influencing. Influencers are trying to get free shit all over the fucking place. Free hotels and free plane tickets and free food and free everything because they're influencers and they'll expose your company to, oh, their huge crowd of people that double tap their Instagram accounts. Yeah, influencers. Awful. They're the worst. I realize it is ironic that people think that I'm an, people, I'm an influencer technically, I guess. I just never want to call myself that and it's stupid. I am Nick. That's it. I'm just going to change the name of this YouTube to Nick. And I, I am Nick. And that's it. Eifer, very gracious of you, bro. If you're looking for some music to play during the vlog or Wildcard Wednesday, my friend's band probably has some extra. Oh, Pff, all right. Let's do that. And, and that goes for anybody, anybody that has ever watched my videos or been here on a live stream. If you are a musician, musical artist, oh. I always need music and uh, I, I like music that doesn't uh, give me copyright strikes on YouTube. And I would rather feature music from people in the industry. Vapors take care of vapors, man. All right. I need to get focused on this, uh, on this Kennedy. Cause all I did was get the leads installed. Um, and I just want to reiterate or iterate. What is it when you reiterate it the first time? Are you just iterating something? Well, well, let me iterate to you. I trust M. Turk, the the person. Hang on. <laughs> I was going somewhere with that, but hang on. Um, battery. That's what I need. It was a battery. <sighs> All right, what, what was I even talking about? Hey, Nick, have you ever heard of the Soul Pod system? I've been a huge fan of them since I found out they're my beer. I have not ever heard of the SOL Soul Pod system. But shit, if you're enjoying it, then then that's it. Then enjoy it. YouTube has the new copyright thing now where music creators can manually flag a timestamp for that purpose. Yeah, um, I've got dinged twice twice and i am basically up shit creek without a paddle uh as far as youtube is concerned i purchased music on a legitimate website i downloaded all of the documents i need to be able to use this particular music in my youtube videos and then recently a bunch of videos from last year all got copyright strikes on them 
It's not against my channel. It's just against that video because the creator of the music says that it's his music. So I'm trying to prove to YouTube like, hey, I bought his music. He sold it to me so that I could use it on YouTube. And I have all the documents that show that I can use this on YouTube. Nope. Nothing. He, he won. He gets all my money now because he made this little clip and I happen to use it in one of my videos. He gets the ad revenue now, even though I bought it and I can prove that I bought it and I have the documentation to prove that I bought it. YouTube is, uh, YouTube is the worst place on earth. So what I was going to say with this Ruby mod, there is no way to check your resistance before you dry fire it. I don't have a multimeter. If you're a vapor with a multimeter, then you can check your resistance before you vape this. But I, I do not have a multimeter, so I'm unable to check my resistance before I vape this. So I'm going to have to glow my coils dry, just going. And here's the thing. I trust MTurk. MTurk, he's a lot of things. And one of those things that he is, is consistent. His MTurk aliens will consistently come out to the exact specification resistance that he says they will every single time. Maybe a little bit of discrepancy, but I know that when I open a pack of MTurk aliens and it says that these are going to come out to a 0.11 and I know that a 0.11 just rules on a mech mod, I know that I can put these MTurk aliens on here. I am confident in Turk and his abilities and his consistency to trust these coils, to throw them on here, to be able to dry fire them and glow them on here. That's what I like. I like Turk and there's just, uh, there's no way. Wow, constant contact. Imagine that. So I'm just gonna be doing some, uh, we, got, we gotta wrap this up. We gotta get to vaping, Nick. Shut up, stop talking. Plus it suddenly became like, 12,000 degrees in here. But we're going to pulse, 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 strum, pulse, pulse, strum, pulse, pulse, strum. Just pulse, just pulse it. That's the, that's the, that's the pulse motion. Pulse, pulse, strum, pulse, pulse, strum, pulse, strum, pulse, honk, honk, smash. It's hard to do with my sweaty glasses riding down my sweaty face. Boom. Oh, God, that was so close. Just working out hot spots. It's one of the things you got to do with a mech and coils. I mean, you don't have to do it with a mech. You just have to do it with coils. I don't know what I'm talking about. Have I mentioned that I haven't eaten lunch yet today? I need food. <sighs> So these are glowing actually really evenly. G stop. Very gracious of you. When you glow your coils on a hybrid, you should preferably do spaced coils. A hot spot on a 0.11 can go down to a 0.06 and push your batteries very hard. Yes, it can. It definitely can. Um, but it doesn't drop. It doesn't drop down to 0.06 for long enough to it really to affect your battery. Um, as soon as they start glowing evenly, I mean, even if you had a hard short, even if, even if I just installed these and pressed the button and held it down, the first thing that's going to happen is the coils are going to melt. The, the coils just, it's just going to melt. It's going to stop the process because the coil got too hot and melted. That's the worst thing that's going to happen is your coil is going to melt. I wouldn't, if this stayed at a 0.06, I would not vape at a 0.06. I just wouldn't. I know this isn't going to stay at a 0.06. I can already see they're glowing nice and evenly. I press the button. I can see the ramp up time. The worst thing that's going to happen, you may, you, you may damage your battery, but it's not, I mean, and I don't, look, full, full disclaimer here. Don't take any of this advice. I don't remember what I was going to say. Um, it's not going to vent your battery. It's not. It's not. It's just not going to vent your battery. It, it might. It won't. It won't vent your battery. If this drops down to a 0.06 and you're pulsing it, it's not going to vent your battery. It's just not. It can damage your battery and it can push it 
Uh, yeah, the, you're, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to cause internal damage to your battery, which means it might not hold a charge as well. It might not recharge as well. It might trail off and drop off faster. You can damage the internals of your batteries, but it's not going to run away. It's not going to hard short and run away. Assuming that you're following all the other safety specifications for using a mech mod, that you're using good batteries and your battery wraps are fully clean and beautifully intact. There's a lot of rules in mech mods. Yes, Michelle Lin, Dull Dime. I am a professional. Please do not try this at home. If you are building on a Ruby mod, Use a multimeter to check your resistance. Don't build too low. Have good battery flawlessly. You don't have to use uh, you don't have to use what what are they called? Contact coils, micro coils. They used to be called. Uh, I'm not going to be using cotton bacon today because I I found a, a love affair again with this uh, Kogan dough. I mean, I still love the bacon. Don't get me wrong. The bacon is still the legit bacon, but I got a new pair of vape shears. And I got uh, I got some Kogan dough, and I've kind of just been enjoying using the Kogan dough again. Organic Japanese cotton pads. I like being able to cut like the exact exact diameter of cotton that I like. You know, when you use cotton bacon for a really long time, you kind of get into that system of eyeballing uh, where you're going to tear your cotton. Just tear it off. But with this, you don't have to eyeball it. You don't have to do it. You just uh, just throw it in there. You know, my glasses are off. My hat's off. I feel like I don't have an identity right now, man. It's all right. It's all right. Okay, so while I'm wicking this, I'm just going to pull the battery out of here because I don't want... I don't want to accidentally hit that switch and, you know, melt your cotton. That's the worst. All right, how much time do we have left? Two minutes remaining. That's it. In two minutes, the stream's just going to end. And then no one will know how the Kennedy 2019 Ruby vapes. The fit, I mean, does it even need to be said? Things like Kennedy just produces beautiful stuff. Just beautiful stuff, beautiful mods. All of the fit and finish on every Kennedy product basically ever in the history of time has always been beautifully perfect, machined. I mean, he's a machinist by trade that's what steve does he is a machinist and so when a machinist a professional machinist starts releasing mech mods and rdas yeah bro you pay attention because that shit's gonna be fire fire so cotton goes in cotton goes in cotton goes in cotton goes in super easy super easy um i like to pop and paint i like to pop and paint on the kennedy products um Steve always yells at me and says that I don't need to do that. He's like, bro, you can just dump your juice in there. It'll hold like two mils in the juice well, and it won't ever, ever leak on you. And I go, I know, I know, I know, but I just like to pop and paint. Part of the joy for me of using a Kennedy is that like that, that Kennedy snap. When you pop that top on, when you pop that top on and off, that's part of the enjoyment on that. Yeah, soil the coil, <laughs> Simon. Soil the coil. Yeah, Kennedy, 100% made in the United States. Not just 100% made in the United States. 100% made in California, baby. California. Alexandre. Hey, Grim Green from Brazil. Cheers, bro. Hello from the United States. Hello from the United States where harm reduction doesn't matter and Everybody's fucking crooked. Welcome to the United States. We now have concentration camps. No, I'm not going to go off on any sort of weird political tangents. We're going to keep this on topic today. All right, Steve. Let's see how this goes. Pfft, firing perfectly, evenly, flawlessly the first time, of course. Yep. Popping, painting, popping, painting. Boom. Boom. I got Turkish Maze loaded up in a brand new 2019 Kennedy Vapor Ruby Hybrid Mech. Turk coils on the inside, 21700 battery. Cheers, guys. Yeah, it's amazing. It's just a fucking weather system.
It's unbelievable. Wicks are already bone dry. Bone dry. That's what, that's the thing. You get like a few good rips out of it, and then they're bone dry again. I know that's why Steve tells me to fill the juice reservoir. Little, you know, little juice. Okay, first of all, I'm saying the J word way too many times. And two, why can't I think well? Liquid well. <laughs> the liquid well. Because when you fill that up, it'll it'll actually wick up your wicks to your coils. Holy fuck. This is spectacular. This is vaping, baby. Uh, this is great. This is incredible. This, uh, yeah, completely makes me rethink what I'm bringing to NVE because I'm definitely, definitely, definitely bringing this with me to NVE now. There's just no way around it. <laughs> Hitting so hard. Hitting so hard. So flavorful. You know, the Kennedy RDA, it's just flavorful. It's just the flavor of a Kennedy is one of those things that, that that's why you buy a Kennedy is to get that Kennedy flavor. Uh, this, I'm just going to, we're going to end this wild card Wednesday and I'm going to say this about the Kennedy. The, Steve from Kennedy Vapor makes some of the nicest mech mods that the vaping industry has ever known. If you're a if you're a vapor enthusiast, like a lot of us are, like I am, a Kennedy is something that you need in your arsenal. You know, like you got the big hitters, like you got a goon, and you got some other big hitters, and you don't have a Kennedy, you should get a Kennedy. And this isn't gatekeeping. I'm not saying you're not a real vapor if you don't have a Kennedy. I'm saying if you are an aficionado. If you are a enthusiast, if you are a hobbyist collector type of person, make sure that the Kennedy's on your list. Just at some point in your vaping career, vape a Kennedy, buy a Kennedy, vape a Vindicator, vape a Kennedy RDA, and it will it, it, it'll it'll just knock your dick in the dirt. It's fantastic. It's just fantastic. And if you don't have a dick, it'll knock something else in the dirt. It'll just knock your soul into the dirt. I'm going to take one more poll. We're going to wrap this up. Yeah. Catwoman. I grew up with the Adam West Batman, and I grew up watching it, so I couldn't turn down a canvas of Catwoman. Like the first ever little Nick Green crush that he had in his life was Catwoman. Lee Merriweather. Catwoman. Yes. Soul Dirt. Band name. Called it. Good job, Jeremy. It's incredible. It's incredible. The button has a little bit less throw on it now because it is that like constant contact button, but it hits. It hits hard. It hits just as hard as any Kennedy I've had before it. Awesome. So I'm definitely going to take this to NVE. Great. Ruined my whole plan. That's fine. Well, we're going to wrap this up, guys. We're going to wrap this up. Let me, uh, should I just chug the rest of this high life? <sighs> Wednesdays. God, I love Wednesdays. This I'm just trying to make hump day a little bit better, you know? Afternoon beers and streaming with a Kennedy. Welcome to Wednesday. Welcome to the new hump day. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. What's up, Joshua from North Wales? Well, welcome. Welcome. Hello from the United States. Our vaping laws are terrible here. <laughs> That's how I'm going to introduce myself constantly. If I ever travel overseas again, oh, in the United States, our vaping laws are terrible. We love smoking there. We love it. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up, guys. Thank you guys uh, so much for coming to hang out with me on Wild Card Wednesday. I would like to do a Wild Card Wednesday next week as well. In addition to the Thursday vlog, we'll be back next week with authority. It's going to be back. I'll see, uh, I'll see some of you at NVE this weekend. I hope to see the majority of you at NVE this weekend. I think it's just going to be 
fucking awesome. It's going to be so fun. And, uh, and yeah, so we're going to wrap this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is this. You get that beautiful hold music. I'm going to do this. And we're just going to sign off. We're going to say good night, good luck. Let's keep on vaping and be excellent to each other, everybody. <laughs>